Fellas, I've been into gaming for a very long time. As you know, I'm a little bit older than some of you watching, than most of you watching. By my analytics, probably all of you watching, because I know some of you probably said you were 65 years old and you're actually not. You just wanted to get around the age check. But with all of that age and experience comes with quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of stories, quite a bit of tales and, and such that have happened to me over my illustrious career. And I realize if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, these tales would have never seen the light of day. So I, like a modern day bard, am here to tell you and regale you of my stories throughout gaming and throughout my history. Welcome to the story of how I pwned a kid's birthday party. Now, I want you to cast your mind back, okay? Let's start this out a long, long time ago in the old age of 2014. And around that time, if you know me, I'm a competitive Smash player. At least I used to be. I'm a Smash commentator now. And I was a competitive Brawl player, eventually switching into PM. But back in the Brawl days, there was a very common practice that you may or may not know about. This practice was known as tournament sniping. You see, there was a big board on smash boards of tournament listings. And they would have all kinds of tournaments happening all over the world. Now, smash boards used to be, like, the hot place. You know, it was like the malt shop. It's like a speakeasy. This is where we all hung out before Twitter. It was a better time. So what good players would do is they would come onto this board and have their crosshairs locked. And they would scope out a tournament to try to snipe. Now, what you would happen is sometimes you would run into another guy there who was also trying to snipe the same tournament. And then you would have a problem. But every once in a while, you would have something that was keen. It was just yours, and nobody else saw it. Enhance. June 25th, 20XX. Actually, 2014. I looked this up later. Smash on the big screen. Super Smash Brothers Brawl, movie theater tournament, $200 prize. Oh, baby. My eyes were seeing dollar signs. My mouth was salivating. $200 for Brawl? Unreal. So what do I do? I say, mark that date. The day arrives. It's at a place called, I don't know, Game Exchange. I just searched this. I don't know if this is the actual place. This is the venue of the tournament, right? Everybody said this is where it was going to be. So I casually pull up in my hoopty, looking happy as a clam, knowing that no other tournament player was ever going to snipe me here. They were never going to find me. And as I pull up, looking pleased as punch, I notice something quite concerning. There are balloons on the sign, which is a bit of a red flag. But that wasn't as much of a red flag as the bouncy castle. That one took me a little longer to find. And I think to my head, oh no, I've made a terrible mistake. However, this tournament was two hours away and there were $200 on the line. Son of a bitch if I'm not going to fight for it. You have to understand, I was only 24 years old. I was a young kid, starving. I had no other means of making money at 24 other than playing video games. So what do I do? I step into the game store and they say, oh, the tournament's actually over there. It's at the movie theater. So I go down the way to the movie theater. Now, this is how the theater actually looked. It's called the Alamo Draft House. You might have this in some of your areas. Uh, it's pretty common. It's, it's all over the place. They serve beer and drinks there. But it looked more like this once I started walking in. It, uh, it had a certain audience there. And I, as a 24-year-old, walked into the lion's den. So here's the actual theater, right? It's something like this. You've got a playpen on the right. You've got little bouncy things down there in the middle. And I, trying to be as, as chipper and as optimistic as ever, step into the theater. And what do I see but one child, two children, three, four, five, six, seven, so many goddamn kids 
all over this theater. I immediately want to turn around. This is a mistake. This is clearly a birthday party and it was not advertised as such. I should not be doing this, right? This was not a good idea. I'm looking very weird here. However, I cast my eyes to the back row of the theater. And what do I see? Several grown men all the way in the back. My age, 20 somethings. And so I say, you know what? Maybe I'm not so weird after all. I'm gonna go get this money. So I make my way to the back, go around the kids, and I sit amongst my people. We're all hanging out, we're talking a little bit, we're having a good time. And uh, nothing's really happening. We're talking about the tournament that's about to happen. And we're like, dude, I, you saw the listing, right? Yeah, oh my god. And these guys are like tournament players, but they're not really all that competitive. They're like, you know, casual O2ers, which is great. That's fine. I'm not trying to come down on these guys. They were trying to have a good time, and they got bamboozled too. So we're all there. Uh, some of them know who I am. They're like, oh my god, you're Kony, uh, DD player. And like, they get, you know, it, it's fine. It's a fun time. So we're talking for a little bit. And then... After about 10 minutes, someone walks into the theater. Now, there was a player around this time from Virginia, right? And he was known for being pretty good. He was always on the come up. He's not bad at all, but he never really hit that next level, right? And he was named after a famous historical figure. Now, I'm not going to tell you what historical figure it is, but let's say it's Julius Caesar, okay? It's not, but let's say it is. He walks into the theater. Along with him is his girlfriend, who I'm going to put Demi Lovato. She was not Demi Lovato, but she was kind of pretty. It was very clear that he brought her as like an intimidation tactic. Like he's like, look what I got. You know what I'm saying? Some people did that. It was kind of weird. But they walk in and I think to myself, oh shit, that guy's pretty good. This might be harder than I thought. They walk up the steps and they sit with us. We sort of chop it up a little bit, you know, talk. Hey, how you been? I haven't seen you in a long time. This guy's really cool. He's a good player. And uh, so we talk for a little bit. And then the tournament's about to begin. And the guy says, hey, we're going to start the tournament. Everybody, if you're competing, come down here and sign up. We all go to sign up. Everybody's good. I say, hey, I've got my controller here. The setup's like down here in the playpen area. And I'm like, how is this going to work? My controller's not going to reach. They said, oh, no, we have another solution. Wave birds. If you don't know what WaveBirds are, these are basically Bluetooth controllers before technology was there yet. The game is already laggy as hell on a movie theater. It's only going to get worse. But whatever. The tournament is obviously free for all because I accidentally stumbled upon this kid's birthday. So I don't really care. They start passing out WaveBirds. You, and then you, and then him. And then this guy, right? So they're just passing out wave birds. Everybody's playing all over the goddamn theater, whatever. Matches on the big screen. Everybody's playing. It's a fun gimmick. It's a little laggy, but who cares? It's the spectacle. You're in the movies, right? So we have a bunch of tournament matches happen. And I go up to play and I easily win because I'm playing with secondaries against kids. Coney wins. And then this other guy, Julius Caesar starts playing. And he beats all the kids. He has no problem. Caesar wins. Coney wins, Caesar wins, Coney wins, Caesar wins, so on and so forth, right? We play about three or four rounds. All the children are now eliminated from the tournament. All the kids whose birthday party it is are gone. They have been wiped out by all the grown men in the back. We feel incredibly guilty. And so what we say is, okay, um, we shouldn't have done this. We're going to let the kids go play free-for-alls, and we're going to go back to the game store, okay? We're going to go back to the game store and, and hide in our shame. We walk back to the game store, right? And so after a bunch of rounds, there are only four people left. Me, one guy, two guy, and Caesar and his girlfriend. This is your final four. And so we all start playing. Caesar unfortunately gets eliminated by one of these two, I believe. I forget exactly what happened, but I think it was a free for all. And I think it was the bottom player gets eliminated. And Caesar met with some very unfortunate luck. So he got knocked out and his girlfriend went with him. So then what happens is the guy is like, this is taking too long. Rather than do anything else like a round robin or 1v1s, 
Let's do a three for all. Let's have all three of you fight. Best of one. Okay. These two guys, who again were, were, knew who I was competitively, start talking. Hey, man, I don't know if we can beat him. I think we should just gang up on him and then we can fight each other 1v1. Yeah, man, that sounds really good. I think we should do that too. Kirby and Rob. A Kirby and a Rob. Adam wanted to get chain grabbed, man. I, you should just go beat him up because he's just going to chain grab me. Yeah, it's a good idea. I don't want to fight him either. He's really good. He's very strong. I am truly appalled by what's happening in front of me. But, like a true competitor, I say, I, I, will, I will withstand all odds. I will break through this and find a way to persevere. And what happens? I persevere. I won. I won the whole thing. $200. It was easy. I chain grabbed the shit out of that Rob. He never left my hands. The Kirby kept trying to get on top of me. Wasn't happening. Better player, better person. So the tournament's over. I won easily. 200 bucks in my pocket. I apologize to the owner, who I think it was like the kid's dad or something. And I'm like, listen, man, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was just a birthday party. I, that wasn't really explained in the thread. He's like, okay, fine, whatever. I don't care. So these guys are talking after the tournament. We're having a good time. Coney, being as, as foolish as ever, goes to leave. And as I walk out the door, I hear Caesar and his girlfriend talking to these two about the other tournament happening the same day. Huh? The other tournament? What do you mean another tournament? Caesar says, oh, um, yeah, there's another tournament that's like 45 minutes away. Uh, but it's not a big deal. Um, not many people go to that. Uh, I don't really think they have that big prizes. So I don't think I'm going to go. I say, you know what? I agree. I'm two hours away. It's already about 3 p.m. And I'm going to get home at 5. I've made $200. I think I've had a great haul. And I wish them well. And I'm on my way back home. Now, dear viewer, I need you to understand. I was very content with just driving home all the way back to my house in Maryland. I was totally fine that day, taking my money and then leaving. But then I thought, I'd like to make more money. I zoom back to the second game store and I enter the tournament. I walk in and who do I see but my two friends from the other tournament, right? About 45 minutes away. And they're standing there. And we talked it up a little bit. They're like, hey, you, you showed up. I didn't think you were going to come. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did think I was either. But, you know, I got time. Whatever. And who do I see in the back of the store? But that motherfucker, Julius Caesar and his girlfriend. Hiding from me. Oh, Caesar, you've done it now. Now I am enraged. Caesar and his girlfriend walk up. Caesar, I didn't think you would be at this tournament. Caesar says, oh, yeah, I figured out that I had a little bit of time. So it's, you know, it's fine. I can figure it out. It's, you know, it's not a problem. His girlfriend says, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a problem. It's okay. We have time. It's not, it's fine. About halfway through the bracket, we're seated one and two on the other side because they know he didn't get close to winning in the other one but some weird stuff happened they know he's like their best player but they know who i am so they see me when they see him too so we're on opposite sides of the bracket we're both making it pretty far and while he's in tournament somewhere around halfway through he's in a match his girlfriend comes up to me okay and she says and i should note she's tall she's she's a tall woman Taller than me. I'm 5'9". But she's probably 5'11 or 6 foot. Okay? She's tall. I'm not short. She's tall. And she says, So, um... So how old are you anyway? And I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm 24. Oh, that's so weird. You're 24 and you're still playing this? Isn't this like a kid's game? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I played it when I was younger. I was just, you know, 
at like I started when I was like 20, 21, and I just still really like it. I don't really play it that much now, but I saw the tournaments. So I thought it'd be fun. Oh, really? Because I just thought it'd be really weird that you would come all the way down here to Virginia to play this game against kids. I mean, you're 24 years old. I'm only 19, and, and Caesar's only 20. So, you know, it's kind of weird that you would do that. Yeah, I guess so, but I'm here, and we're gonna play, so I just, I hope we have a good match. I hope we have a good time. Thank you, young lady, for your input. She shrinks down. I think she felt bad about it later, because then she talked to me, and she was, like, asking me where I got my jacket from, and was, like, being really nice. She was, like, I think she felt embarrassed about trying to power move me like that, trying to make her boyfriend happy or something, but whatever. Comes down to just two gentlemen in grand finals. Myself and Caesar. But wait! The owner has one more trick up his sleeve. He knows that I won the other tournament. He likes Caesar. Caesar is somebody that comes to his tournaments a lot and he wants to give him a chance to win. So what does the owner do? Gentlemen, to make this match even more hype, it will be a 1v1, three stocks, on a random stage. Best of one. I don't know if I've told you this, dear reader, but Caesar and I both play the same character. We both played King Dedede. That is a problem. We go into the match. We're here at stage select, right? I select my character. Green Dedede. Caesar selects his character, Red DDD. Of all the stages in Brawl, there are a couple that you would want in this sort of scenario, right? Maybe like a battlefield, or, you know, maybe maybe FD, I guess. Uh, Smashville would be amazing. There are plenty of stages that you would like to see in a best of one with a random stage. What stage do you think we got? That's right! It's Rumble Falls! The most fun stage in the game! There are several hundred dollars riding on this match! With two DDDs, infinite walk-offs, walls galore, constant vertical scrolling. Please watch this match! Please imagine fighting on this stage for money! Look at all the shit that can go wrong. Ladders, platforms, it gets small in the middle. There's like spikes on it. You could go off to the side, walk offs like crazy, okay? It's a disaster. You should never put money on this. Not only that, in case you don't know, this is what a DDD ditto looks like. This is what we're going to do to each other. It's going to be a disaster! This is all the gameplay! There are $400 riding on this! The match begins! It immediately starts with me grabbing his ass, and we both go this way! Chain grab, chain grab, chain grab, chain grab, he's dead! I'm up a stock! What happens next stock? He grabs me! Guess what happens? Chain grab, chain grab, chain grab, chain grab, chain grab. We go off the side. I'm dead. Two stocks apiece. This happens two more times. Both ways. Okay? We just, we can't stop. We're just grabbing each other and killing each other off one mistake. But then, at the very end, what happens? Oh, viewer, we don't go this way. We go this way there's a wall here so what happens boom 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 the stage is moving at this point the stage is going down but i'm not done boom 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 the stage continues to lower and i'm just chain grabbing the fuck it. boom 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 he's against the wall we get all the way to the bottom I get him one more time. Boom. He tries to jump. I footstool 
and jump into the stratosphere. Caesar falls into the waterfall below. And with that, I win $400 and drive my ass all the way home. I've won the day. And that is how I totally pooned a child's birthday party. I hope you guys like it. Good story. I love that story. Yeah, this is actually me. This is this was me at the very end. Money bags galore. <laughs>